top of that, I also need to make a promise to myself to never pass by my local cash converters. I'm not too sure if you guys have the similar thing where you guys are, I'm pretty sure you do, but a cash converter here in the UK is a basically a, um, um, what do you call it? Like a high street version of a pawn shop, but it's for like electronics mostly. I know other pawn shops do other things, but most of the time, the place that's near me, it's mostly electronics and watches and stuff and sometimes jewelry, but not really jewelry. No, no, not jewelry actually. It's mostly electronics and of course watches and whatever else it may be. But sometimes when I pass by it, you find some real steals because unfortunately, um, you go, especially the one I live by, like it's got all the stuff that I would be interested in, like audio visual stuff and of course music equipment. And it can be quite sad going into a cash converse. I'm not going to lie. It can be quite sad because you feel like it's the land of like broken dreams. You see all these, you know, gadgets and all these flipping gear and equipment that somebody had when they were pursuing maybe a career in something or an interest. And now they have to kind of convert it for money because they're kind of broke and don't have anything. And sometimes people use that as collateral. It's kind of like a, a good loan. It's kind of like a good way to get a loan if you have, aren't able to get a loan from a bank. So if you have something worthwhile, you can basically, you know, send give it to cash converters. They can give they can give you some money for it, which is usually nowhere close to what it's actually worth because obviously they've got to sell it on and make their profit or whatnot. But then you also have an option to buy it back later, but you get some cash in the meantime if you actually need it to kind of pay the bills and stuff. So it, it's whatever. But it can be a little bit, I might have conflicting, you know, views and feelings when I go in there. It's an amazing opportunity to get some amazing tech and electronics for cheap, but then it also makes me feel like, damn, man, like all these broken dreams that I'm kind of benefiting from, right? These people that kind of gave up on their dreams gave up on their hobbies or whatnot and now here i am benefiting on it anyway when i put that to one side in the same way that we all go to bars and we probably you know we would like to have plastic straws instead of you know paper ones because they just they just they're just better and we don't care how many turtles die so we kind of put that to one side when i put that to one side i did end up picking up a pretty decent thing the other day right when i went to the flipping catch converters and i picked up this canon power shot digital camera and you're probably wondering why did you buy a canon power shot digital camera when you've got an iphone 14 pro max whatever right i just got it recently whatever maybe and it's got a really good, con good camera on it and bloody blah 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 well if you guys don't know nowadays it's become very very in vogue to film like lo-fi type videos and the funny thing about lo-fi nowadays when i was growing up the, the version of lo-fi that was like used in like um art and design and promotion and marketing type of stuff was usually vhs so guys were going out and buying vhs cameras i forgot what the particular model is but it's a model that people used to film skate videos back in the day and brands used to pop you know you buy those cameras all the time and directors and stuff and basically film their videos with that camera or they'll try to get a camera close to that quality to have that kind of grainy vhs type quality on their videos nowadays what people like to see or the kind of the in trend thing to see and to do nowadays is to film your video and make it look like an old digital camera from like the early 2000s so it's that whole 2000 kind of you know core thing happening at the moment so usually cameras are like anywhere between like i would say 8 megapixels to 12 megapixels which was kind of like what those digital cameras were like back in the day or your phone like think of like a nokia phone from then motorola phones sony ericsson's phones maybe they're about six megapixels but all those cameras uh, can naturally kind of give this weird little kind of grain that's what the kids are using and i really want to start filming some in club video review type things that's my kind of next project i want to do on the channel and just overall in terms of content i want to create because as passionate as i am about club culture sometimes just sitting here talking about my experience in the club can't sometimes doesn't come across the greatest but it's just me sitting in front of my bookcase and i've had complaints of some people saying oh you know here i am sitting here after the fact complaining like the the club was too cold right it just doesn't hit the same without any evidence of it or like b-roll or whatever it may be so i'm gonna use this camera actually which i've got which is a canon powershot a10 a1 a10 sorry as you can see here right pretty decent camera it's funny because this this camera is if I'm not mistaken, how, does it say megapixel? It doesn't it say it on here. It doesn't say a megapixel. Oh no, 16 megapixel. But the the footage is really grainy. So, so I don't think the video footage is that. So it may be 16 megapixel for the camera, but I, I think for the video it's probably far less. But the interesting thing about this camera is that when you open the flipping um, bottom where all the flipping batteries are, right here, where the memory card is, it's actually AAA or sorry, AA batteries. It's not an actual battery cartridge that you would get. So it's a bit different. So I think this is probably a really cheaper version, a really cheap version, an affordable version of a power shot. I'm sure Canon make loads of power shots, but this isn't like a, you know, one of those 
amazing ones that people have, but it'll do the job. And obviously, we've got a memory card holder as well there that you can put in there that's already that's in there that I can use. And of course, the, the fact that I've got an old MacBook Pro means that I can pop the micro SD directly into the laptop and, and obviously edit it and shit. So the plan is to use this camera when I next go out and record some footage. Look how small it is compared to my hand. Like, Jesus. Either I've got really massive hands or this camera is fucking tiny. I look like an absolute gargantuan with that, innit? Jesus. But yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to use this when I next go out to a club and record some footage and stuff and edit it together and obviously um, try and do some version of a cool flipping club night review dj review type of thing and see how that goes so that should be pretty fun and most likely <laughs> this camera will be the reason why i get blocked by some more flipping professional djs out there who are unhappy that I say oh i didn't like the flipping set i mean that like, those guys are so sensitive it's unreal but yeah i'm still looking forward to it. i think it's going to be pretty cool and pretty fun to do so that's the new project i'm currently working